being uh, 2 o'clock, a few minutes after, I will call the August 9th, 2024 Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded for cable cast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. Why not? The approved minutes of this meeting will serve as the official record of the proceedings by state law. If it's on cable or t PAC TV or whatever it is. It's not it's official. Public. It's public. Oh, it's public. I didn't say it wasn't public. I just said it's not the official it's recording. It's not, not a public record for the meeting. It is it not. It is a public record for the meeting. It is not. It is a record of the meeting, but it is not official public record. I'm sorry, State. John. I disagree with you totally on that. Well, we can take that I, offline and we'll figure it out for the next meeting. I think if it's helpful, just a point of clarification, if it's available to the public, yes, they can observe it, do what they want with it, but we wouldn't have any capacity to have control over Area 58's video, meaning if you wanted an official copy of it, you'd be on your own to contact Area 58 or whatever. That, that's not, that's ridiculous, actually. Because it's on area, area 58, it's on YouTube. Anybody can go and get the selectman meeting right. on YouTube. But it's public. If they wanted to say, okay, in the meeting, this was said, and I'm referencing the, the cable cup broadcast, mm -hmm. it would not be considered official and it would not be allowed in the court. Oh, see. <laughs> but it, okay, this. We'll take, I'll take, we'll, We'll take it up at another time, but I, I'm still disagreeing with everything regarding not official public record. It, it is a public record, and it is official as far as I'm concerned. I can go onto YouTube. Uh, Joe Schmoll can go onto YouTube we don't, and look at the and look at the meeting then. We don't li deny that, Nancy. It's that it's just not considered official in terms of the open meeting law. Oh uh, well, really? Okay. Um, See, that's MGL. You just Google Open Meeting Law of Massachusetts. It'll give you all the information you want. Oh, believe me, I've <laughs> I have. These okay. words are also the um, recommendation of town council. More importantly, um, they are capturing the essence of the Eternal General's understanding of Open Meeting Law. This isn't our um, idea or suggestion. No. It is what is... Um, has been said is required of us to do by the state. Since the passage of the open meeting law. Uh, back in the archaic decades. Um, no, I, 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 I'm still totally disagree, and but I respect your opinion and everything. John okay. And Mark and Liz, but however, I'm still questioning. Okay. We'll move on, and if you like, I can send you some uh, information from our legal term, our legal counsel. So, well, you know, I'd rather go just to the state. Okay. Thank That's you. fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. The first agenda item is an update from our town accountant for a uh, fiscal year 24 closeout and free cash process status. Um, I don't. Do you mind coming over here, Lisa, so that we can pick it up for the... Uh, There's a microphone right there. Yeah. This will pick her up, right? From here, okay. Richard. Okay. Um, so I don't have any definite numbers or figures or dates yet, but I do have timeline work I've worked on. We hope, I'm hoping to have the balance sheet and everything submitted to the state by the end of September, maybe even by the end of next week. And it's the end of September at the latest. And then I'm hoping, if things go well, that we can then have free cash certified by the middle of October. Um, and we are looking to do the recap and set the tax rate by the middle of November, before Thanksgiving. Uh, I spoke to the assessor today, and we really want to get that done before Thanksgiving. How does that compare to last year? I think there'll be less free cash than there was last year. Will the timing of the submission be earlier or about the same? Um, I would like for it to be earlier, but it all depends when I send my stuff into the state what they, what they find. Okay. That's where, that's where the time delay comes. Okay. But I'm hoping by the very end, by the end of next week, 
maybe earlier to have all my stuff submitted to the state. Great. So then it depends, you know, um, Martin will look at it. Any roadblocks that you see or anything we can do to help you? Not at this point, but maybe at your next meeting I might have more information. Okay. Okay, I do have um, another, you know, my the Todd who comes in to help me. I will probably definitely schedule a time with him just to go over things and make sure that he like likes my numbers and we agree on things. So that um, hopefully that will make going with the state a little bit easier too. Okay, good. But, yeah, so it's, it's we, I, I am, I'd say I'm probably a week to 10 days behind where I would have liked to have been due to the fact that I was waiting on the schools for some information. Um, Silver Lake or Denver? Silver Lake. Yeah. It gets a little confusing because they pay their teachers. All the money that they pay through the summer is actually money from their FY24 budget. So they have to accrue that into FY25 in order to pay them. And I was I waiting for them to get final numbers to me for that so that okay. they could do the approvals correct and things. Um, they're working hard over there, but they were, they were left with quite a mess to clean up. So they've got... Um, this is when Christine left, you mean? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, okay. they really, they're struggling over there. They're under under um, employed. They don't have enough people. And I met with the two, they came here and we sat and we talked for quite a while about things. And um, we're gonna start sending them updates every month with our numbers so that they can monthly check theirs against ours to make sure we're in agreement. Great, of that's a good idea. At the end of the year. Yeah, good. Any questions? I'm good. Dean, I'm good. No. Mr. Mrs. Well, Town Administrator, you okay? Yes. Anything else you okay. want from me? That's good. No, thank you for the update. Okay. That's good. I'll be up in my office if you need okay. me <laughs> for a bit yet. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Your feedback is from that would be close to that one. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Probably. Next agenda item is a uh, discussion oh. of name change. This is something I brought up the last couple of years. Um, at least over half, the, there's 292 towns in the state of Massachusetts. These are towns that have uh, not cities. So it, there's another 50 cities. And then there's eight towns that were unaccounted for. <laughs> I don't know where they went. Of the 292 towns, um, over half have changed from the name Board of Selectmen to Select Board. The Mass Municipal Association only uses Select Board when referring to towns that have a uh, Select Board or Board of Selectmen. The state now only sends out issues and they don't use Board of Selectmen unless it's back, they have to go back to a prior time and somehow it's official that they need to use that name. But everything going forward is, uh, is labeled Select Board. The towns that abut us right now, Pembroke, Middleborough, and Carver have all moved to Select Board as a title. Um, only uh, Halifax and Kingston and ourselves do not use that name. Plymouth has moved to Select Board as has Duxbury. And I just think it's uh, time that we follow suit. I don't think this is a, a politically correct thing to do. I think it's just uh, recognition that we have more women than men right now in, uh, in town departments, if you look. I mean, from the state level down. The governor's a woman, the lieutenant governor's a woman, the attorney general's a woman. At the federal level, we have a woman senator. At the state level, we have a woman state rep and a woman senator. At our level, local, we have a woman town administrator, a woman town accountant, a woman town treasurer, a woman town clerk, and a woman fire chief. So I think it's, I would make a motion that we move to change the name, but I'd like to hear your inputs before I go. Um, well, I think we've discussed this at, at least twice in the past. I am, um, I, I understand all you say, John, and I respect your opinion on this. 
I am dead set against the change. I enjoy being a, a called a selectman. I particularly enjoy being connected with a tradition that goes back to 1707. Um, I think, um, as you describe, I think just that, that there are so many women in leadership roles, it shows where we stand on that. And I, I just don't see the, the need for a name change. I love being a selectman. I think we can get into um, a perpetuating quagmire of changing names, of trying to um, spiff them up to say something. I, the best um, uh, uh, demonstration of our commitment to leadership is um, the treasurer, the accountant, the clerk, the town administrator, the fire chief, the vast majority of the leadership roles in this town um, are um, by women. So I'm, I'm very content um, to continue to be a board of selectmen. Dana? Oh, my opinion is, is that it should be up to the town. You know, we were voted in by the town. I think it'd be shown something that the town should decide on how they want to be governed. And if we're going to change the name from selectmen to a board of, or select board or whatever it is. But I also might be concerned that I would turn my, you know, help to the town administrator. I would think that there might be some other costs involved in concurring that as far as just changing the name. I don't, doesn't seem to me it's going to be a simple solution. But I do believe that it has to be something that the town has to vote on and have to look at because we represent the town, not the other way around. But I don't know whether the town administrator would like to weigh in on that, but I would imagine there would be some things with legal parts of it of how things are worded and so forth and paperwork that we have. That <clears throat> you want to? Sure, sure. So I think the path of least resistance would be if you were so inclined to pursue this would be to put it on town meeting as an article and let people decide. The only thing that I would mention um, in conjunction with what Mr. Smith was saying is that there are certain cost implications. All of our bylaws are codified and we have to pay um, to e-code 360 for every single bylaw change that we make. Now, I don't know exactly how much that would be, but anywhere in our bylaws where it states Board of Selectmen, that would need to be changed to whatever the new name is. And there's obviously a cost associated with that. I'm sure that we could get a refined estimate as far as what we'd be looking at for that well in time for town meeting, but it is another consideration. I, I have looked at the other towns, and uh, I looked at the legal implications of doing this. It is, from a legal viewpoint, it's no more than going through and just dropping in the new name in the code once you've made the official change. Right, correct. So I'd be very surprised if there's any cost of any consequence. But I think if, uh, if you're not, in every other town that I know of, it's just been a vote of the selectmen. So if you want to go to an article, that's fine. So I would make a motion that we for the annual town meeting that we put on there an article to change the uh, board of selectmen, the name of the board of selectmen to select board. But I need a second. I second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. Okay. The uh, next agenda item is a request from Ethan St Stiles uh, from the Board of uh, the Board of Appeals. Uh, he has filled out a disclosure form with the board as uh, he is on the uh, zoning. What did it get me? The uh, board of Appeals. Board of Appeals, and since there is. Uh, a financial interest that he has with one of the uh, proponents, he had to file with the state a motion, um, paperwork to show that there was it was not of significance so that he could go forward. Thank you. 
looked at the, uh, you've seen yes. that, yeah. mm -hmm. and you've seen it, Mike, right? I have. It's a little hard to untangle all these all the time. It is certainly what the Attorney General's office recommended. Mm -hmm. um, we did have Tom to <coughs> take a look at um, who was also fine with it, and that gives me the comfort to feel like um, yeah. we should go ahead and approve that. So I would make a motion uh, to uh, make a determination that the financial interest is not substantial as to be deemed likely to affect the integrity of the services which the municipality may expect from the employee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have uh, two appointments. Uh, one is for a new member of the police department, Steve Gerhardt. And this would be a full-time police officer until dissolved. I would suggest we uh, do that for one first, and then we'll do town clerk after. Sure. Okay. So I would, unless there's some comments, motion to appoint Steve Gerhardt as a full-time police officer, effective September 9th, 2024, until dissolved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The second appointment came in uh, as an emergency appointment because there is now a request by uh, the county district attorney, as I understand it, to recount all the ballots for the state senate uh, race. The uh, Republican race was decided by 50 votes, and the person who lost has asked for a recount which means that we have to count them by hand. Uh, so the town clerk has come forth. She needs a, uh, a temporary board of registrar for the recount, which will take place Thursday. So she has asked that we put through a motion to approve that for Mr. Brian Wick to be the temporary board of registrar which would go from uh, September 9th, 2024 till December 31st, 2024. So unless there's some comment, discussion? Okay. Glad to have Brian uh, yeah. involved. So I would make a motion that uh, Brian Wick be appointed temporary board of registrar for the period September 9th, 2024 until December 31st, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The uh, third thing is, traditionally the Board of uh, Selectmen have put together a list of the departments that we s service for uh, liaisons. I'm just trying to find the list here, and then I'll... Did I give it to Sorry, I did not print it. <laughs> I can read it to you. I have it electronically here. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Just give me one minute. I know I'm bad, but it can't be that bad. There it is. Okay. So we st each year we go through, and we, we put who on the Board of Selectmen is a liaison to what departments in town so that if a board or a committee has a question where they don't want to come to the full board, they're just looking for an answer, they have a person as a focal point. And uh, I'll just read down these. These are the departments and the person who would be the focal point for each department from the Board of Selectmen. Agricultural and Animals, Mark Russo. Assessors, Mark Russo. The Code, Board of Health, Building and Zoning, Dana Smith. Community Preservation, Conservation Commission, Mark Russo. Council on Aging, John Trainer. Financial, Treasurer, Accountant, Finance Committee, John Trainer. Highway Transfer Station, Dana Smith. Historical Commission and District, Mark Russo. Housing, Mark Russo. Land Use, Land Preservation, Parks, Tree Warden, Mark Russo. Library, John Trainer. Planning, 
Old Colony Planning Council and Planning Board, Dana Smith. Plymouth County, Plymouth County Advisory Boards and Commissioners, Dana Smith. Plimpton Historical Society, John Trainer. Public Safety, Police and Fire Department, John Trainer. Schools, School Contract Negotiation Rep, Dana Smith. Technology, John Trainer. Town Property Committees and Recreation Sports Fields, John Trainer. Town Clerk, Dana Smith. Veterans, Dana Smith. And Wage and Personnel Advisory, Mark Russo. So many of these were, we've been doing this for each year. Um, it seems to work out in that on the ones I have, I try to meet with them once a month and just say, you know, anything going on that I can help you with, it'll be up to you with. That's how you want. And we tried to put them into logical buckets. Mark Russo over the years has been our traditional person in terms of land acquisition, learn, land issues of any kind. Um, I know Dana coming on, you. I guess there'll be some areas that will be new, but we have good department heads, so I think it'll be good. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, yeah, I, go ahead. Might I just refine the sure, go ahead. A little of liaisons? Um, I, the intent in the last few years we've done this is a, a simplified means of communication when communication is necessary between the board, town administrator, and boards. Um, uh, in, this is intended as another avenue of communication and someone um, assigned to each of these to be a little more ready to understand what's going on, but mainly about communication, mainly about how helping town administrator when issues, issues coming up, certainly uh, the li liaisons are not seen as a decision-making entity. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, we're only there to help. Dave. Uh, I have a question about uh, I do. You're right. I don't remember. Yeah, it's not exhaustive. The list we've pared it down over time, but yes, John is frequently in communication with Alan. Okay. But that's a good point. I think we should put it on here. We can add it back a, on. It's an important committee. Yeah. Yeah. Creative. Yeah. I come to think of it. Board of Appeals? Is there someone that you connect with there? Uh, that would be under Dana. That would fall under code. It would be yeah, um, Dana Smith. Yeah, Board of Building Zoning. Okay. So no changes to that list, right? No, just the addition of Bylaw Review Committee under my name. The next agenda item is a uh, one-day liquor license request from Sawchuck Farm and Stella Wagon Beer Company uh, for, I'll just read off the dates quickly, September 21st, 22nd, 28th, 29th, October 5th, 6th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 19th, 20th, 26th, 27th, and 11th. November 2nd and November 3rd. Uh, these are for <coughs> liquor licenses on that day at the uh, corn mazes, I understand it. Was done last year and I believe the year before. So something we've traditionally done, we have police details. Uh, the police is in sync with this. And that has been an issue in the past. Uh, previously, there were times the company didn't want to do that, but that's straightened out yes. this time. Yes. Yep. There, there will be a correct case detail. Correct. Same as last year. Okay. Yeah. We didn't have any issues. We had no issues last year. They, they also do now uh, reserve parking. So we we originally had questions around, you know, do we need two police officers? One for the parking because they were parking on the road. And all correct. That, yeah. But that seems to have resolved itself with the reservations that they do. So if no discussion, more discussion, I'd make a motion to approve the one-day liquor license request for Sawchuck Farm slash Stellwagen Brewery on the dates noted on the updated meeting agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Lawrence Bate. 
if you could sign that. I gotta sign it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Which one is? That's you. Three warrants, $9,652.95. Nothing of any large consequence? No. Okay. Uh, I think that goes that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Our ever source bills were due. Some little things around the townhouse. The legal bill for the month. Okay. That's what it Town administrator updates. So one of the grants that I applied for for green communities to do the remaining work needed at the library on the heating system to help provide um, reliable heating, cooling, and some dehumidification, um, that was awarded. So that's been awarded from the state's Department of Energy Resources, and for us, it's in the amount of $135,007. And um, that brings my individual total for grants that I've brought in over the last few years to well over $1 million. So this is another win for the town. And um, I wouldn't have been able to do this as effectively without some input from um, one of the members of our town properties committee, Ross McPherson. Um, he has a lot of expertise in the area of um, energy and um, he was very helpful as far as putting the finishing touches on the application. So very grateful to him as well as to Old Colony Planning Council for some of their technical support. Um, they help us out yearly with our annual reporting that we have to do for the Green Communities Program. Um, so that's a good thing, and hopefully work can get started on that fairly soon. I'll be coordinating with Mike Sloss, and, and we'll figure out a timeline for it. <coughs> so more to come, I'll keep everybody posted. That, that is great. I mean, that, I don't think, one of the things we have to do is publish the amount of grants we get across the different departments, fire, police, what you have done, uh, I don't think the town has any idea of the amount of money that we bring in that if we weren't getting it, in some cases we would have to go and raise an appropriate. Right. So this is, it's important that we're on top of this and thank you for the effort. That's great. You uh, paid for your salary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Um, so I also have here, um, I just wanted the board to be aware of it. Customarily, I will sign the annual computer services contract. And this is with local computer store. It's Michael Rodriguez. And um, it covers all of his weekly on-site visits, 24-7 um, phone support. He also manages all of our off-site backup and storage of information. Uh, manages our server and he deals with any hardware or software issues that may arise. Um, his services are 700 a month, um, 699. So I'm going to be executing that so that we're under contract with him for the next fiscal year. Um, but he's very responsive. <coughs> so if anyone ever encounters an issue email wise or other, um, he's very quick to get stuff taken care of like that. We also have the um, fire and police departments are planning the joint September 11th ceremony, and that will be um, out here in the townhouse parking lot by the flagpole, and that is on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. They're asking people to arrive, and the ceremony will start promptly at 9.55 a.m., and they've already put word out on social media, but I'll make sure that gets shared to the town's page Please, as well. Yeah. Um, I also here. sent it out to the uh, distribution I have for the, uh, the first SAD library. Okay. So that's 150 people. Excellent. And I uh, do Just one thing, I did talk to Kathy Lenatra and she won't be able to make it. She has to do the Kingston in the morning and uh, oh, okay. Plymouth in the afternoon. Okay. So she sends her regards. Excellent. Okay. Um, that's all I have for updates and correspondence. Okay. Um, vis a vis minutes, um, I want to just take a minute to talk about that for a minute. 
Um, we need to approve some executive me minutes, and I know based on feedback from each of you to the town administrator that she's incorporating that and uh, dra changing the draft of the new minutes, which will go out to each of us, as I understand it, sometime later in the week. What I would like to do is uh, call a special meeting, executive meeting, just for approving those minutes uh, next week based on your, your um, you know, availability. Uh, say Monday morning, and it doesn't have to be, we can just set a time because we're gonna open the meeting, go into executive, discuss the meetings, approve them, and come out of the meeting, and that'll be the end. We won't go back into open meeting. So if you would just give Liz during the week uh, when you're available. Okay. I think Monday and Thursdays? Monday and Wednesday. Monday and Wednesday. So if you can do that, that'd be I great. can connect with Mark and Dana offline yep, and set up a date and time that works, and then we'll properly post it and go from there. Thanks. The minutes of August 26th for the open, did you get a chance to look at those? Yes. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of August 26th, the open meeting, as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Raves. Any other discussion before we go to Raves? No? Do you have any Raves? Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> So um, my rave is for um, questions which are useful and constructive. Um, that um, despite personal opinion, preference, philosophy, ego, despite past grievances, questions like what's best for the town, most importantly, how do we move forward? How do we keep things moving? So um, again, my rave is for those kinds of questions that are able to surmount obstacles and keep things moving forward. Okay. I'm good. Well, they did a rave last week, uh, the last meeting for Jackie Freitas. Uh, it was rewarding to see the turnout uh, for the celebration uh, over at Hillcrest. There were well over 100 people there. And as most of the people who were there that we're talking, mentioned, Jackie got in your face and she let you know exactly what she was thinking. And uh, the last time I saw Jackie, she got in my face about the duplicate poles all around town because of Eversource putting in the new wiring. And I, I promised her I would make an effort to get those poles the old pole's gone. So I know every time there's a pole that goes out, I'm gonna look up and say, that's one more, because there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So my rave is uh, just the affection that was shown by the turnout for uh, Jackie. That's all I have. Okay. So our next Board of Selectmen meetings will be, open meetings will be at uh, September 23rd, next meeting at two o'clock. And uh, once we have a uh, day for the executive meeting we're talking about, we'll publish that. Do you have dates, anything for October yet? Yeah, we have the dates set. I just didn't print it on there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, I, I'd have to look at the calendar. It's like the first Monday, I think, and the third like Monday. The I think it's the fourth, maybe. 10-7. 10-7. Okay. So, there be a no, uh, Further items, unless anybody here has something they want to say? Uh, I'll make a motion that we close the open session of the uh, August 9th meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming. <laughs>